Hi, welcome to How to Survive Society podcast. I'm your girl, Abby Ayala Williams. I'm your host for today, and I'm here to give you the platform that you need to share your story. These stories are inspiring. It's about people that have been through the ringer in life, but they managed to come to the other side smiling and winning. So this is what it's all about. I just want to say thank you to my guest for today. Thank you for coming on to share your story. And I hope you as a listener, you'll be able to get inspired and learn and just be motivated that and see that no matter what you've been through in life, you too can win. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, this is your girl, Abby Ayola Williams, and I'm here with Miss Lola Savage. This is the podcast for How to Survive Society. It's pretty much about um, inspiring stories about people that have been through the ringers in life, but they came through on the other side, thriving, surviving, and just doing things, you know, that will inspire you. So it's all about storytelling, um, helping you get mentally prepared for life because mm-hmm. society is not an easy thing to deal with. <laughs> exactly. If, if you get stuck in the system, you're screwed. <laughs> so, exactly. <laughs> so we're all about getting out of the system and mm-hmm. thriving no matter what happens to us. So like I said, mm-hmm. once again, our guest today is Lola Savage. So I'm going to introduce Lola Savage. Lola Savage is a... She lives in California. She's a mother of two, a boy and a girl. They're both teenagers. Mm-hmm. And her son <laughs> graduated. Um, mm-hmm. Grade he, uh, he's, gradu- he's graduating on the 4th. The 4th. Oh, amazing. Fourth. Mm-hmm. So now you have a son going to university or college. Yes, absolutely. Wow. He's going with a scholarship. Um, he's focusing on computer engineering or science he hasn't really made he hasn't really decided yet but yes he's he's definitely look, looking to do something in computers so yeah wow that is amazing and yeah and your daughter is currently 16 years old i believe yeah she'll be 17 in september wow and september when september 27th oh nice one of my son yeah. is september 18th <laughs> oh wow! So he's also yeah. he's a Libra. I'm, I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, he's a. I I think so. Yeah. He's yeah, he's Libra. probably on either on the cusp of. He's probably on the cusp of Libra or Virgo. One of those. No, no, no. He's a Virgo. Yeah, yeah. He's bad. a Virgo. Got it. Yeah, because yeah. my niece is 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 September seventeenth, and she's a Virgo. Yeah, yeah. He's a Virgo, just like mm-hmm. his dad. His dad is August twenty. Twenty eighth. Mm-hmm. Twenty sixth. 26? Oh, okay. Wait. He's a Libra then. He's a Virgo. No, he's a Virgo. He's a Virgo? Really? Yeah. At that, at that end of September is usually Libra. That's crazy. No, it's August. It's August. Oh, August. Okay. You said September. That's why. Yeah. It's no, it's that, yeah. Is that my is sister, August? My sister is, is, um, the one that you met. She's, um, she's, um, September. I'm sorry. She's, um, August 31st. My younger sister. So she's a Virgo. Virgo, and then yeah. my older sister is the September eighth. So they're both Virgos. Virgo. I have so many Virgos in my family. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. I have two Virgos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <It's a most laughs> Virgos are the most in this world. I don't know why we came into this world, and Virgos are the ones <laughs> who are just disrupting life for everybody else. There's so many of them. No, I think there's more Scorpios actually than Virgos. You think so? I actually yeah. think there's more Virgos than Scorpios. That's yeah, crazy. That's okay. I, I have yeah. I know a lot of Scorpios. Like oh, a lot. Wow. 
Yeah. yeah, I know a lot of Virgos. So I think it just depends. I think it just depends on oh, who you know. The, the, yeah, who you know. Like the more, the more that you see that are it, the zodiac that you actually see the most. If that even makes any sense, I don't even know what I just said. But anyway, you know what I mean. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Trust me. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, anyway. I was in church earlier today, and I was like, those enough. Not that the pastor is born or anything, but it was just like, I was just so tired. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we mothers, we mothers, we got, we got just life to deal with. I'm not even going to break it down to certain aspects of it just life period it's hard you know whether it's exactly exactly mm-hmm. it is yeah so mm-hmm. i wanted to talk to you today so you can share a little bit about your story and mm-hmm. what you went through growing up how you're surviving and how you know because now you're like a social media influencer which is i amazing. mean at least i try to be i don't really take it that seriously anymore <laughs> but yes i did <laughs> i did actually do it um, for years, I did social media influencing for years. I started to actually get more um, infused into the whole entire world in 2015 mm-hmm. when um, Instagram just started to show more of its lucrative side. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I think it kind of found me on accident because I was already doing the music or at least trying to push myself as an artist. Mm-hmm. You know, I went back to Nigeria um, for a couple of years and I thought, you know, that would be successful considering I had already been doing music before I went to Nigeria as an R&B artist here in the States. So mm-hmm. a lot of people were pushing me and they were like, hey, you know, just give it a shot. Just do Afrobeats. So mm-hmm. I did that for a while. I started doing Afrobeats in like 2008. Mm-hmm. You know, I worked with um, some artists just to name a few, LD, mm-hmm. and um, some some producers and stuff like that. And it seems like, you know, it was going to work well. So a lot of people kept telling me to go back to Nigeria. So I went, I did mm-hmm. that, and then I came back, and then I was like, okay, it didn't work out. I did acting a little bit too in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. I kind of got, I don't know, I kind of got discouraged, and then I just came back. And then the influencing sort of just kind of picked up um, even more for me, like around 2016, 2017. So mm-hmm. I decided to move from Chicago and come to California and see how that would go work out for me. Mm-hmm. And then when I came here, I it was hard, you know, because, you know, the industry is pretty saturated, mm-hmm. especially here in, in America. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to, you know, work and work and work and, you know, just find ways and at least multiple ways for me to, you know, grow mm-hmm. my income. In the, mm-hmm. in the industry. And I did that. And I found, you know, some agencies that could help, you know, push me in that aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, some few companies, like influencer marketing companies, you know, were able to get me work. So, I mean, look, I just try to just do the best that I can. It's not something that um, I feel like I could grow and fall mm-hmm. back on and use as like my everyday job. But, yes. you know, it, it gets me gets me by here and there. Um, I actually went back to work. So right mm-hmm. now I'm actually working um, for the, the, the government, the California government right now um, mm-hmm. as a consultant. Yeah. So I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to just keep doing whatever it is that I need to do. Just keep food on the table, you know, just keep a roof yeah, over so my cool. head, take care of my kids and make sure that, mm-hmm. you know, they go, they grow, they, you know, become some really good intelligent you know career driven kids and <sighs> I, honestly it's hard because i'm a single mom you know and mm-hmm. even though I, I i hate to use as a as an excuse i'm not gonna lie but mm-hmm. i have to also be honest it's hard yeah but you know we just have to keep doing what we gotta do so yeah and I, yeah and i respect you for actually working and mm-hmm. And putting food on the table because a lot of people, especially in California, they feel like, you know, they yeah. don't, don't want to do like regular work because they're in the industry. So, no. Gonna, like, and, and it's them. funny that you say that because a lot of people who are actually industry mm-hmm. right now or have, or have at least gotten somewhere big in the industry did actually start from scratch. 
Mm-hmm. You know, there are some people right now that I know that I can tell you on the back of my hand um, that are in the industry, but also have side jobs. Mm-hmm. You know, so that stigma from the past where they make you think that, oh, or singer, because you're an actor, you're a singer, or you do something mm-hmm. in the industry, um, you shouldn't be looked at as someone who works for works a nine to five or yeah. has some type of other type of income coming in. That's all changed, you know. Like it's not it's not looked at in that aspect anymore. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like you could be an actor and you could be making six figures, mm-hmm. and there is absolutely nothing wrong with you working a nine to five for a corporate corporate co- company. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like whichever way good. you're able actually keep your your family afloat and you know keep your mm-hmm. income coming in if that opportunity is there for you it makes sense for you to grab it and then grab it grab latch on to it and don't let that go good to hear <laughs> i know back in the day it was like that mm-hmm. it's like it was like yeah, it's yeah it was a stigma that if you're in the industry you could have been put mm-hmm. dead working yeah. somewhere else or else you'll be ashamed or exactly exactly like for example, there was the, um, the guy from Bill Cosby. Mm-hmm. I, I, I don't yeah, remember his that's, name. He's but... a perfect example. Perfect yeah. example. Like he was an actor, but he had a day job, yeah. and they they ridiculed him because and tried to make fun of him. Then mm-hmm. some, supposedly some person caught him working at uh, a nine to five at Trader Joe's. Yes. And posted posted a, a video of him, mm-hmm. and it supposedly went viral. But it. The, uh, the ridicule that the person was thinking he was going to get ended up actually being his blessing. Exactly. He the guy thought he it was going to booking. Mm-hmm. He ended up booking jobs um, for TV shows. I remember him being on Power. I think still is on yeah, Power. Yeah, Power. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Power um, 3, I believe, mm-hmm. with Tariq. Mm-hmm. Well, with Tariq, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah someone Patrick. thought they were gonna use it to shame him, but God turned it around and gave exactly. him double honor. So mm-hmm. that's a perfect mm-hmm. example of like you can't make fun of people or their hustles because, I mean, we all have to find a living. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You know. Exactly. So, yeah. I mean, right now, this generation is looking at um, life differently, and mm-hmm. you know, if every everyone um, feels like. They should, you know, just, you know, be real with themselves. That exactly. same real will recognize you. You know what I mean? Because real always recognizes real. So that's just me. I'm just like, I'm just so real. I'm just open with myself. I don't care, you know. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, if um, whichever opportunity falls into my lap, you know, is able to recognize me for who I am and see me, you know, exactly. be authentic. If I am and want to work with me, then great. If not, that's fine. You know, that door closes. <laughs> you, exactly. you just keep moving and you move on to the next door. So that's basically my, my mentality. I just try to, you know, make make sure that I continually see the positivity and everything as I go. And that again, like good. I said, I'm a single mom, so I can allow anything to break my, my mm-hmm. spirit. Like, okay. um, because I need to keep my spirit mm-hmm. positive and, mm-hmm. and, and juicy. <laughs> enough for my kids to actually, you know, you know, pull from that so that they can stay positive for themselves. And right now it's, it's, it's not easy. You know, you hear a lot of stories of a lot of, you know, young adults committing suicide and, you know, their mental health is just like shot to death because, mm-hmm. you know, they're looking at, you know, all these, you know, fake life on social media and thinking that that's what yeah. they need for themselves. No, yeah. that's not how life should be. You know, you, you're supposed to live life for yourself, live, do you for you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, just, you know, focus on yourself, you know, love yourself. It's, it's true. It's so true. Like there's, there's social life, mm-hmm. like on social media, and then there's mm-hmm. real life, you know? Yeah, real life, yeah. yeah. So it's but always, people- it's always important to just know how to separate the two. And that's mm-hmm. what, you know, and I will be honest, I kind of learned that, um, the hard way myself. You know, I didn't see it that way myself because I was always, you know, taking from all the the, the false narratives that, you know, that were being put out there. Like, oh, mm-hmm. if you have a social media platform, you are supposed to have it a certain way for mm-hmm. you to be a certain type of person. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, 
I remember for a while, you know, there was this whole world of if you had a social media page and if you wanted to be this type of person, you mm-hmm. actually needed to make sure that your page was like a certain type of amount of followers or yeah. a certain type of amount of likes. And you needed to make sure that you found a way to grow it. And if you didn't mm-hmm. um, have like your own niche and you weren't able to grow it in an organic way, then mm-hmm. you have like all these other um, platforms where you can fall back on and purchase the followers and purchase the likes and all that mm-hmm. crap. And mm-hmm. it made you believe that that was what was going to help you, you know? Yeah. yeah. You don't figure all these things out on, on, up until later. And it's just like, it's too late. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I was a victim of that, you know? And I learned the brutal aspect of it. You know what I mean? I definitely took a huge lesson from that. And I use it to just change and just alter things for myself. You know what I mean? So as a woman who actually has two teenage kids, I want them to be able to say, okay, you know what? All we got right now is mommy. And we we need to make sure that everything that we're learning from mom Mm -hmm. is helpful. Of course, I want them to be their own person. But then at the same time, who else is going to give them the advice if not me? You know what I mean? It starts with me. So I want them, I want them to be able to see that, okay, you know what? Mom is real and mom is teaching us the correct steps for them to excel and be good at what they, what they want to do. You know what I mean? So that's, I mean, I'm just learning and it's, it's hard for us millennials. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't see it, but it's really hard. It's really hard. And um, it's like we're learning, but at the same time, we're unlearning stuff. Just yeah. to make sure that our kids get it through the correct way. That makes sense. Exactly. So, yeah. It's really life. It's really hard life, man. But, you know, I'll get through it. We all will get through it. Of <laughs> course. That That's mm-hmm. one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you today. Because mm-hmm. I've read your story. Mm-hmm. I've seen what you've been through. And yet, mm-hmm. you still keep a smile on your face. And you still yeah. do things. And you're still mm-hmm. out there grinding. Like... To yeah. tell you guys how I met Lola. So we're doing uh, Ninja Wise of Hollywood, and Lola is one of the cast members there. So the reason why we, we wanted you to be on the show is because of, you know, just the way you are as a person, you know, like mm-hmm. you're you're more than enough, you know, like you don't need anybody to add to you. Just mm-hmm. you enough is enough, mm-hmm. you know. So we wanted to give you a platform to tell your story and just be a... A, a positive person mindset for people so they can so they can see that you know no matter what you go through in life you don't you can't you don't you can't let that be what defines you or who yeah. you are you know because mm-hmm. we all go through stuff in life like that's yeah. just the reality of it mm-hmm. you know yeah, and like, true, like a lot of people actually use their their past or their upbringing to stray away from what the good mm-hmm. opportunities that they actually have set in front of them, mm-hmm. you know, that they use their, their hardships to actually say, okay, you know what, since I had it this hard, then mm-hmm. I guess I'm just going to allow the system to take over my life rather than mm-hmm. me being the system that's mm-hmm. going to control my life. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I know that yes, each and every single one of us, even those of us who are doing well, are, mm-hmm. you know, in some ways, you know, kind of controlled by the system. Because if we're living in a country like America, that's just unfortunate. You're going to have some type of, some aspect of the system controlling certain mm-hmm. certain things for you. But then mm-hmm. at the end of the day, it still all starts with you, you know. Like, I had a tough upbringing, you know. I, I grew up eight years in Nigeria. So mm-hmm. I was able to, you know, of course, learn the culture. Mm-hmm. And I was able to actually see life from a different view, you know, as a child. Mm-hmm. So when people ask me or talk to me, I'm always like, I actually have two ways of viewing, you know, how my I want my life to live. Mm-hmm. Of course, there's the African aspect of everything and there's the American aspect of everything, mm-hmm. you know. So what I try to make sure that I teach my kids or just even the young ones around me mm-hmm. is that, you know, there are certain things that you probably learned as an African individual that you feel that they may not be helpful for you right now. You know, there's plenty of things that 
a lot of us went through growing up in Nigeria or just growing up in a separate country or our own actual background countries that we picked up on or that was that was done to us that mm-hmm. has basically opened our eyes in certain ways where we're just like, okay, you know what? This is something that I definitely don't want my children to go through. So mm-hmm. it's up to you to say, okay, you know what? Those things that I I, I basically um, need to either unlearn or I need to forget about or I need to not use to, you know what I mean? To, I don't even know how to explain it. Like to, 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 to fall back on where it's like, it's, it's not good for me. Yes. I need to make sure that I take from that lesson or that experience and say, okay, you know what? This has taught me in a way where it won't be bad for me. So I'll use that to teach my kids so it won't be bad for them, if that makes any sense. I mean, yeah. I'm basically going to explain it the way, the way that I can. You know, I'm going to be able to, I'm just basically going to articulate it the way I know how. Um, because for me, I grew up um, in a home where, unfortunately, I was um, I was actually in a home where, unfortunately, I was I had to, I went through some child molestation, you know, mm-hmm. and it's not something that I actually ever really talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't my immediate, it wasn't my parents, it wasn't you know anyone immediate, but of course, it just it's. It was a home where it happened, you know, Mm -hmm. and I won't really, you know, say who who it was, but it happened. And I, it's something that, you know, like it affected me in a way. Yeah. You know, and it also didn't help that I lost my dad at a very young age. You know, so I lost my dad when I was 17. And there were a lot of things that I felt like um, because of their generation and how they grew up, my mom and my dad, there Mm -hmm. were a lot of things that were missing that I didn't catch up on, that I felt like I didn't learn. And mm-hmm. there were a lot of things that, that weren't supposed to happen that happened. So there's like an, uh, an off balance. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's, some things are off. <laughs> I, 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 I totally understand what you mean. When yeah. you get broken and like, you know, in Nigeria, there's like, um, when there's like a compound, like a mm-hmm. apartment building, mm-hmm. and there's like a few... Um, a few places, like a few, I forgot what they're called. Is it, um, mm-hmm. flats? Yeah, they call them, I think, I don't even, I don't, I don't remember what the terms are, but I, I get, yeah, well, they're I called flats. Yeah, yeah, where like there's, you have neighbors that, mm-hmm. you know, are close to the family and mm-hmm. they're friends. And then because you guys are around the same age group, you have kids that you hang around with in the same compound kind of stuff. Yeah. But that's the way I grew up. So I, I kind of know. Mm-hmm exactly what you're talking about like it's not really a family member but it's like a neighbor like somebody that is known to the family pretty much exactly i kind of i kind of went through that same ish you know like Mm -hmm. where was like a neighbor kid it was like and i think two or three years older than me it was it was a boy Mm -hmm. and then Mm -hmm. i remember specifically twice in a row like i would black out and then when i wake up um I would see my mom and then them checking me like, are you okay? Are you okay? Like, and then my, my, uh, the lower part of, um, you know, uh-huh. like, uh, uh-huh. hurting, like, th- uh, mm-hmm. like, you know, when like someone's like rubbed something yeah. on you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, something like I would feel that pain, but mm-hmm. I didn't know what it was back then. Cause I was like, maybe like six or seven. Right. I want right. to time. Yeah, I, I was around that age too. I was, um, it happened, it happened consecutively actually between the ages of around six and, well, I would say more seven, seven and ten, because I left Nigeria when I was ten. I mean, when I was twelve. Yeah. Because, um, my parents found out it, it, about it happening. I mean, of course, I was super young, so I wasn't able to voice what was yeah, going on. What was going on? But yes. I don't remember the, I'm not, it's very big, so I'm not really, you know, able to give you like the actual details. Yeah. verbatim but it did happen to me and then my parents found out and then the person that was doing it was kicked out of our area so it stopped happening but the point is I was young yes. and I was also young enough to remember it yeah so that kind of stuck with me and it kind of bothered me for years and years and years and just being um also you know brought up in a home where discipline was a must it was very strenuous 
Mm-hmm. My my father was a huge, huge overprotective disciplinarian, you know. Yes. And um, me and my my sisters actually suffered at the hands. I can say words suffer, and I don't use that lightly. We mm-hmm. suffered at the hands of you know. I don't. I hate to say the word, the term child abuse, but in America, that's what it's considered. If you think about it, mm-hmm. and it was just very, very, very strict. You know, it was a very strict upbringing and. Sometimes when I look back on it, I'm just like, wow, you know, it did mold me into becoming um, who I am today in some ways. But then at the same time, it did affect me, you know, emotionally and mentally. And um, um, so those types of things, it's like, I'm like, okay, I, I use that to, to teach. You know, some people use those types of things and those hardships, and those situations and trauma to to become the opposite or they become those persons themselves, mm-hmm. you know, whereas for me, I wanted that type of situation. I made sure that that type of situation was not who I was going to become. And I did not want to, um, approve that into my kids' lives. If that makes sense, you know what I mean. Yeah, so so yeah. I use those situations to become a better person rather than, you know, yeah, <laughs> the opposite. Which is, so, yeah, which is amazing. Which is the you have the right mindset. Mm-hmm. Of Absolutely, it's, and it's it's always better to just use those situations to build the right mindset for yourself especially when you're a mother and especially when you're a single mother you know i've been through a lot i've been through a lot like i literally can write a book with all the stuff that i have been through in my life but i just don't talk about it because you know i never really was given the platform to talk about it you know (laughs) and i'm still going through a lot to be honest with you i really am because it's like i'm still in school you know i never finished school because i felt like it made sense for me to focus on entertainment at such a young age instead of school. Mm. And then having my first child at 21 also sort of hindered me from completing my academics as fast as my, my, the rest of my family did. So I'm the only one out of my siblings who's still in school. You know what I mean? So it was always like, okay, you know what? Am I going to have my children focus on, the things that they feel like they need to focus that does not have to do with their academics Mm -hmm. or am I going to push them to actually focus on their academics and build a career for themselves initially before wanting to focus on any hobbies or any things like that. You know, Mm -hmm. I chose to teach them making sure that they focus on their education first rather than, you know, just, you know, anything else that's on the outside skirts, like, you know, being in a relationship or focusing on doing music or whatever the case mm-hmm. may be, you know, so I felt because- like I needed to instill that in them because I feel like, okay, with the way this world and this country alone is set up, that's very important, you know, but I also want to make sure that I teach them that if they don't finish their school, that they focus yeah. on making sure that they build a career for themselves because they're intelligent children. My kids are smart mm-hmm. and I can confidently say that, you know? Yes. And so you're so, pretty yeah. much doing mm-hmm. what the, you know, like our parents did to us kind of. Yeah, but, yeah. But, but, but I'm flipping it, flipping it around. Like I know my parents taught me, you know, my, my dad's so rest in peace. He definitely taught me. He was a very smart guy. He was a professor and a pastor. Not to say that those are the things who makes him the, the, the good man that he, or the good traits that he had in his, you know, when he was alive. But at the end of the day, he taught me and I can never take that away despite, you know, what I might have not liked about, not have not, not have liked about yes. the way, you know, I was brought up. But, um, I, I pick up on a lot of these things. You know, I told myself it's important for me to make sure that I use these things to teach or unteach if I have to, you know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's, we just, the mind is a very, very fragile thing. I swear, especially when you're alone, you're at a young age. And my son and my daughter right now are like the world to me. Like they mean the most to me. So a lot of people ask also why I haven't excelled in certain things. I don't think it's a bad thing for me to say they are the reason why I haven't really put so much 
of my all into some of the things that I have loved to do. Because yeah. I'm like, okay, I had kids early, and that's how God wanted it. So am I just going to say forget about forget about them? No, I'm not. I'm going to have to make sure that my kids are good, you know? Yes. You know, also, a lot of people ask me, why did I put them in boarding school? I said, I didn't only put them in boarding school because I wanted to focus on my career or focus on the things that I wanted to do for myself. I also put them in boarding school because I wanted it to build character for them. Mm. I was in boarding school, actually. I actually went to boarding school in Nigeria. Um, yeah. I feel like that actually gave me a platform to to think this at a young age. That discipline actually that I got from being at that school, it actually gave me the ability to think more, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I didn't have anyone thinking for me. I thought for me. I was thinking for myself. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in, in the middle of all those teachings at the school, I was able to actually, you know, sort of process everything my own way. You know, and I, and I know that might probably not help for some people, but it helps for me, you know? Yep. You know, and, and, it, and, it, and it makes, it, it even makes me even think more now. Because I'm just like, wow, at such a young age, I was in boarding school and I was able to actually think for myself and be successful at least majority of the time with it, <laughs> you know? So I always tell myself, my, my grown self now, that wow, if I was able to do that at such a young age, eleven, twelve, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I was able to actually like learn from my own mistakes or just unlearn certain certain things because I was I had that, you know, that that shrine, my own platform where I can't think of the word, where I was able to actually think and process things for myself. You know, like view yeah. everyone's experiences around me and use that to teach myself, you know what I mean? Then it's, it's, it's like a piece of cake for me now, you know? So I'm just grateful for, you know, some of the things that I went through as a child, you know, it, you know, I try to, I try to be the type of person where I'm like, okay, you know what, even though there were some things that I went through that I didn't like, or of course that didn't really suit me, mm-hmm. it was also a learning experience because I could say, oh my gosh, that taught me what not to do, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know? And it's teaching me what what to teach my kids not to do. Not to do. <laughs> you know? So yeah. It's exactly. just, that's just my circle. that's just the circle of life. And that's that was based, that's just basically been my circle, girl. Yeah. You know? yeah totally. <laughs> just been my circle. I usually tell my daughter like Mm-hmm. When she says, oh, I can't do this. Oh, I can't walk. Cause we, like, she walks to, I mean, she walks home from school. And then sometimes mm-hmm. she'll be like, oh, mommy, can you come get me? I'll tell her, mm-hmm. when I was, when I, when I was your age, I was in boarding school. Six a.m. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Up, they wake us up to run four laps around the field. And then, <laughs> and then after you come back, you shower yeah, and fresh water outside, cold water. <laughs> outside mm-hmm. and then you walk 45 minutes to school after all <laughs> yep. this, like you're and you're calling me to come pick mm-hmm. you up from school where it's like seven minutes walk i'm like girl mm-hmm. get on your feet and walk so that's, that's just the way that's just that's the way I'm like, talking about. like kids because mm-hmm. it's like yo mm-hmm. like don't take any just because you're in a bra doesn't mean you have to be lazy boom boom I'm trying to teach them that discipline that yo like no matter how easy you get, you have it, you still have mm-hmm. to go through some stuff to yeah, build, build thick skin. Yeah. yeah. You gotta, gotta get thick skin and yeah. you have to go through these experiences because it, it really does help build character and personality. It teaches exactly. you and all these good things. Yeah. So exactly. I was just talking to my, my little sister actually about some situations with my little, my, my, my youngest one, Shadi. Mm-hmm. Um, she actually is going to be coming here for the summer. So when I go for TJ's graduation on the 4th, the mm-hmm. plan is to bring her back with me because TJ is actually staying because he is going to Disney World with his his um, senior class. Yeah. Um, his honor, the honors. They're going to um, Disney World for his senior class, and then when he comes back, he's going right back to work because he has a job now. Oh. So wow. Shadi is yeah, and the only thing that I love about my kids is they remind me of myself. Like I had my first job at fifteen. Yeah. You know, I was working at McDonald's. And yeah. girl, yes, did I trek from my house five blocks every day to that same McDonald's 
wow. every day, you know? So I'm like, okay, so I'm starting to see me coming mm-hmm. out, you mm-hmm. know? Of course, their generation is a little late because our generation, we were, our first jobs was what, 14, 15? Yeah. Whereas for them, you know, 17, 18, they're just not having their first jobs. But I still see it. I see the wants and I see, you know, the dedication. I see the, the motivation. They're actually, they're actually excited mm-hmm. about, you know, that type of independence, you know, being able to, you know, go through these situations and learn and, and grow, you know. Um, my son actually was like, Mom, um, I'm about to start my first year of college. Are you going to buy me a car? <laughs> and I was like, well, you know, that is the plan. Of course, I don't mind getting you a car, but I do want you to go through it at least maybe the first half um, mm-hmm. up until the beginning of next year. Yeah. Um, taking public transportation. Want to know why? Because I did it. Yep. And I want you to learn that too. I don't mm-hmm. want you to always feel like there's going to be a vehicle ready for you every single minute. I want you to be able to say, okay, you know what? If there is no vehicle, I'm definitely going to have to learn. Exactly. I'm going to have to learn, you know, the steps that, that I'm going to need to take, all these measures that I'm going to need to take, you mm-hmm. know, to make sure that I get from A to B, you know. Cool. So, yeah. And he's like, okay, I'm going to do it. So, you know, basically what we're going to do is we're going to sit down and we're going to, you know, come up with, you know, the plan on, on you know, how he's going to be getting from A to B, from his apartment to school every day. Mm-hmm. until that moment when we finally, you know, purchase this car and have it ready for him. We don't, he, he doesn't know when yet, but it's going to happen. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so my daughter is actually coming here. So she's going to be here for me for the sum- with me for the summer. And me and my little sister were talk- talking about, like, we were just talking about it, as a matter of fact, uh, right before um, this, um, you, you know, you and I started this, um, this chat mm-hmm. about how we're going to basically get her a job. And she's excited. You know, she wants to have her own income and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I want her to, you know, be able to say, okay, you know what? I don't mind, you know, walking from A to B, from house yeah. to work every day, you know, because she feels good about the fact that she's able to have her own, you know, that independence, you know, yeah. they've been itching for it, you know? So I'm excited, you know, these kids definitely need to learn independence at a young age because it really 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 helps you it really helps build you it helps mold you i like you know? that i like that yeah i i noticed that your last name is savage right is that like mm-hmm. a real last name or it's a made-up last name no it's real my my dad's my my dad's family mm-hmm. uh, family's last name is is savage where i just received the text okay yeah so it's it's easy for everyone to think it's me but it's actually not real and it's only the only reason why it's easy to think pe- like for people to think it's fake is because of the word savage that has gone viral in the past few years. Mm-hmm. Before the, the the savage the whole savage thing went viral, you know what I mean? No one came to me and said, "Oh wow, nice last name." Oh, was that your last? No, I didn't get any of that. It's just recently <laughs> now that all of a sudden people are like, "Oh my god, you have such a cool last name." Oh my God! I wish my last name was Savage. And then they also go, they also go. Oh my God, Lola! And then you now have Savage. That's like an actress name. You should be famous. I get that so much, girl. I just be looking at these folks like, stop! It ain't even that serious. It's just a word. That's so funny because yeah, but there's also history behind the whole Savage thing. I was actually just talking to one of my coworkers about it yesterday. Yeah. I was telling her about, you know, it's, um, it's, I think, uh, European based. Of course, obviously, Nigeria is, you know, is, um, European or British colonized. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of people bearing that last name, Savage mm-hmm. in Nigeria. And which, of course, there are plenty of English last names yeah. in Nigeria. You know, Savage yeah. just happens to be one of them, you know? So yeah, that's, that's just basically the story behind it. So did you ever that's find that deep? Just be like, the, like the real, um, last name, like from your family, like from before, before, like, did you ever find um, out? I, I have never done that. I've actually never tried to do that whole lineage check mm-hmm. thing that they do. But mm-hmm. I'm proud to actually just, you know, be connected with my mom's roots. Like my mom comes from um, a tribe that's pretty well known in Nigeria called Eti. 
So mm-hmm. there's a there's a bunch of them. There's actually different different tribes, or should I say, um, homes. Yeah, I forget the I forget the the way she explained it, but there's different homes of the Etsy tribe. Um, spelled E T T I, and my mom is from Barua Etsy. There's a bunch of them. There's um, if you Google it, just Google Etsy, you see a bunch of names, and it's hyphenated. So my mom is from Barua Etsy, and never really followed on um the history of it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, my mom just basically tells me that that's where her family is from, and I'm like, okay, well that's nice. So that I can just basically go with that. I actually yeah. don't know a lot of my my dad's family members. I only probably know like one or two from when I was growing up. Wow. And um, when he passed away, yeah, when he passed away, we didn't really keep in touch. My mom didn't really keep in touch with most of them because, um, again, my mom actually is a victim of um, domestic abuse. Mm. So am I. So am I. So I think that's another thing that um, made it easy for my mom to just sort of like not really talk to them talk to them and it wasn't like intentional it was also it was vice versa you know yeah. like my mom at least tried at least to you know be in touch with a few of my dad's siblings um but yeah it wasn't reciprocated so yeah we just kind of kind of just well, you know, just, just let it go yeah so well, yeah i don't i don't really have um, many cousins very savage and if they are there I, I don't know where they are so Oh. <laughs> it's crazy, I know. It's crazy. <laughs> I think I only have like maybe one or two that I know for sure, for sure, like you know, that are I'm in touch with and they live in Nigeria. So Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That that's pretty cool though. It's yeah. really cool. <laughs> so before um we end this podcast, I wanted to ask you, um, what is your advice for somebody that's going through hell right now? Going through the ring, like more life is just throwing them one punch, yeah. after the, and they're still, down. yeah. Oh my gosh, I have been there, girl. And to be honest with you, I'm still there, so yes, mm. honestly, it's it's because everything you, you know, it's so easy for someone to just show that they're that they're okay, but you mm-hmm. just never know deep down inside that people are not okay, you know. Mm-hmm. So you just have to stay strong, you know. For some people, I'm look, I'm a, I'm a psychology major. So I'm just going to basically try to tackle this as much as well as I can, you know. <laughs> For some people, okay, therapy works. A lot of people don't believe in therapy. Mm. But talking to someone always works, mm. whether it's someone who's just fully equipped um, enough to sit down with you on a chair across from you and actually give you the, or ha- just, you know, just even just be a good listener. Yeah. And just give you the advice that you need according to what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Or a family person, a family member, friend that you feel like you can confide in, that you can actually have like deep conversations with that will be able to, you know, just comfort you. You know what I mean? What if you don't have that? What if you don't have anything? What if you you don't have that? The only, the only advice that I could give, the only thing that I feel that will work Mm-hmm. is just staying strong. Mm. Yeah, just just looking at looking for the positives and just pulling those positive things about you or even people that are around you. Just pulling those things out and just instilling it in your brain and focusing on that and just staying focused on the positives as well as you possibly can. Mm. Because the more you think of the negative things that are sur- that you're surrounded by, if you keep on thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking about it, it would drain you. And we, as we all know, those types of things, people are fragile. There are people who can deal with it, but those mm-hmm. types of things will it it will, it could lead to like the worst case scenarios. You know what I mean? Like suicide and or just you know just just crawling off the handle and just making the, the wrong move. Like I was just talking to my sister yesterday about uh, uh, an individual who just broke down and he instead, okay. So, you know, people, people will pick, you know, suicide and in their own lives. Right. And there are actually some people who will actually pick doing or causing mayhem, like causing, you know, mischief, like maybe going and robbing a bank. 
or just going and pointing a gun at someone and robbing them like right then and there or committing murder yeah. or just drinking hella crazy and then like just racking up DUIs and mm-hmm. having accidents. It could be anything. Yeah. You know, people actually deal with these types of situations differently. Mm-hmm. You know? So I feel like the best way and like I don't know, and I'm like I said, I'm gonna, you know, just give this advice to the best of my ability. You know, yes, I am a segment major, but I am also someone who's just real and I tell it how it's working for me. For mm-hmm. me, how it works is just making sure that I stay positive and I pull the positive aspects of my life mm-hmm. out and mm-hmm. just just pay close mind like just just keep that in the, at, the t- at the tip of your mind yeah you know I mean? because life it, it just it could be worse you could have it worse that's true you, know I, mean? you I mean yeah if you look at it there are people who have it worse yeah you know just stay on focused on the positives the positive yep. side the positive aspects of your life mm-hmm. and just keep pushing just keep working hard and keep pushing keep working hard and keep pushing like right now the positives that I like to focus on is that my kids are good and they're healthy. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. even if I'm, even if I have only $1,000 in my bank account, guess what? I'm still working hard and I'm focusing on the good aspects of my life and my yeah. surroundings, yes. my family. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, just simply just breathing. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. Like I said, I just, I, I use what works for me. Yeah, you know it's saying? a blessing to I be. A, it's easy. For, yeah, it's easy for me to not to not look at everyone's what everyone else's lives mm-hmm. and say I want what they have. Mm-hmm. I'm not that type of person. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I focus on me. Yes, you know? and so whatever works for me might not work for the next person, but I will continue to give this advice. Yes. Focus on positivity. Always want positivity around you. Always want good vibes around you. It always helps you know, your brain to stay intact, if that makes any sense. <laughs> it, does, it does. It makes sense. Life it makes hard. Sense. Mm-hmm. Those are great, great, great advice. Yeah, I hope, I hope it helps somebody, you know, it helps yeah. me. Definitely. That's what this yeah. podcast all about. Like, um, helping people just mm-hmm. get through, yeah. survive society because it's, it, it's hard. It is hard. Yeah, it's hard. It is hard. I'm also I'm also studying um um human services. So I'm my mom actually is someone who has always been, you know, very, very motivated. Like she's very she's very inspiring when it comes to like just helping people. Because my mom has been that person for years. My mom, you know, whether it's work or whether it's just her personal life, has helped many people get out of ruts. You know what I'm saying? And you would not see my mom going on social media saying, hey, I have, you know, what uh, a foundation for helping people or a nonprofit. You know what I mean? She's just, you know, a person who's very spiritual. She focuses on the church and she just focuses on helping people. And she also works for the Department of Human Services in Chicago. And she's been there for over 20 years. So she's really well respected. And, you know, and a lot of people don't know that. You know, she's also... Um, are like you know, in some ways, a pastor. We have she has like a title at the church that I go to, but she's mm-hmm. very well respected in church. So it's like, yeah, she has definitely been, you know, my my rock, like my motivation, just through life. Period. You know, um, when she was widowed when I was seventeen, you yeah. know, she she sort of you know she had her moments. You know, she broke down and you know she she you know. She's mm-hmm. just being the mom the way she could be, you yeah. know? So when I needed advice, she, at some points, was there. She, at some points, she wasn't. But, you know, what did I have to, what, did, what What can I do? The only thing that I had was for me to just teach myself, yeah. you know? But when she came around, she came around, and she was there, that woman. So she's yeah, she's definitely taught me a lot. And, um, yeah. That's yeah. amazing. I'm glad that you can lean on your and your For my family, yeah, for sure. Back. Yes, that's really, really very important. And mm-hmm. blessed. You are blessed. Thank you. I appreciate you. Girl. Thank you. Yes, girl. So mm-hmm. I just want to say 
thank you so much for being my first guest. <laughs> oh, really? I am? I didn't even know that. I thought it's something you've been doing for a while. No, this is just the first time. Oh, it means a lot. I appreciate this. This was, yeah. Yeah, you're my first guest, so I really appreciate you. Yeah. For trusting I'm, happy, I'm, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to do it. Yes, and I and I hope somebody today has been inspired hearing mm. this. Whether you're at the gym or you're driving to work or you're just waking mm. up or whatever you're doing right mm. now, I just hope you've been inspired and just know that the the end is not near. So mm-hmm. you need to have time to do you, be positive. Mm-hmm. You can achieve whatever you put your mind to. Just yeah, believe that too. Yourself. Sure. Believe in yourself. That's it. That's all you need. So yeah. thank you so much for doing You're this. Welcome. You're welcome. And, yeah. I, was, I was glad to do it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you for the guest today. We are really, I am really, really appreciative for coming on here to share your story. The reason being is because it's not easy to share a story, especially if you've been through the worst in life. Um, some people feel ashamed. Some people feel like it's their fault. Some people just don't feel like they don't have the courage to share it. So I just want to say thank you for having the courage to share your story. And I hope you as a listener was able to learn something from today's guest and if you want to be a guest on this show how to survive society message me on instagram under abby ayola so that's a b b y a y o o l a um dm me and we'll get take it from there so if you want to be on the show as a guest my doors are open as long as you have a story to tell i'm i'm here to listen so Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. God bless. Have a great day.